Chicago in America's Midwest is the third biggest city in the USA, sprawling over 50 square miles on the edge of Lake Michigan. Away from the glamour of the downtown skyscrapers, large areas of the city have been blighted by violence. Dozens of bizarrely named gangs battle with each other for control of territory and criminal supremacy. These clashes have led to Chicago becoming the murder capital of the USA. The police are fighting back with a series of targeted operations and new, tough anti-gang laws. Slowly, the murder rate has begun to drop. In a unique project, two British bobbies have been invited to the city to experience the success of the American cops. PC's Andy Samuels and Chris Piggott have 17 years' experience in the police. As part of the elite proactive team in the Thames Valley, they routinely tackle hardcore criminals, burglars and drug dealers. Stand still. In line with the rest of Britain, they found they're increasingly dealing with organized gangs and higher levels of gun crime, something the Americans have been coping with for years. It's going to be interesting, it's going to be very interesting. They've, um, they've obviously got a lot more of a, a gang problem than we've got, although we've got an increase in gangs at the minute. So um, it's going to be quite interesting to see how they deal with it compared to us. Yeah, I've had a, a little look on the internet and the gun crime out there is rife. So, uh, yeah, a very violent city by the sound of it. Should be, uh, should be an experience. It comes down to common sense in the end. I mean, these boys carry guns, they deal with gun culture every day. So I think let them deal with the initial bit and then we'll get out and muck in if we need to. Yeah, I'm expecting them to be, you know, particularly well organised. I mean, they're used to dealing with this sort of thing all day. I hope that their training is going to be sort of top notch and they know what they're doing. You'd have thought so. Mm. Yeah. Worst case scenario, I get shot. That's the worst case scenario, but hopefully that won't happen. You've just got to put the trust in the people you're working with. Exactly, exactly. If you've got no trust in your fellow officer, then what else can you do? What can you do? <laughs> Annie and Chris will spend a month with the tactical gang unit of the Cicero police. You want to play that way? I'm just, I'm just you want to have an attitude and I have an attitude? I'm just saying what kind of hard on you got against me, man. There are many similarities between the British and American legal systems, but the policing styles are very different. In the UK, the police are sworn to keep the peace and by and large receive the support of the general public. In the USA, officers are part of a law enforcement team and serve a largely unsympathetic public. With a history of organized crime stretching back to the gangster Al Capone, the area is notorious for drugs, prostitution, and murder. In recent years, the population of Cicero, 100,000 people, packed into four square miles, has changed. There's been an influx from Mexico, and 75% of the population is now Hispanic. As Andy and Chris arrive at the headquarters of the gang unit, what will they learn out on the streets with the Cicero police? Sergeant Gene Talsma briefs the team. Five or six different incidents in our town. It's a stark warning of what's in store. One of them including uh, shots being fired into a vehicle, missing a girl's head uh, just by inches. There was a car chase in another incident. They beat up another guy with a crowbar. So if anyone sees these Latin Kings uh, in this black and silver Suburban, it's got thumb tags on it. Tow it, find out, you know, get some info on it. We have two officers from London. They have their vests and everything, so they're ready to go. That's uh, Chris and Andy. All right, guys. Their briefings are quite similar to ours in uh, you'll get all the team in and uh, just tell them what's been going on overnight, and what's been happening and anything we need to look for, including uh, vehicles, people of interest, anyone who needs arresting and that type of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's very similar. Obviously, the main difference here is that most of the uh, scrotes carry guns, whereas at home, it's very hard to get hold of, which is, is a good thing about the UK at the moment. They're obviously kept very busy. Chris discovers that only certain officers are invited to join the tactical gang unit. Basically, you are putting this unit uh, due to your work habit. So most of these people who are here uh, were brought here because they're good workers yeah. and because they're aggressive and because they don't need to be babysat for. Yeah. So basically we have the cream of the crop. 
It's a highly dedicated team of officers. Sister Police, open the door, man. You did six months, remember what, that PCP? Law enforcement, what are you calling me for? Yeah, 391, take the call, uh, dogs barking. Uh, yeah, Mark, it's okay right on that. <laughs> but it seems not everyone appreciates the hard work they put in. Well, the general public of Cicero really uh, does not cooperate or appreciate or respect, for that matter, the police. Uh, they perceive us as the enemy for one reason or another, when in all actuality we're here to protect the public. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, without the public getting involved and giving us information and helping us, you know, our hands get tied. So with such a marked divide between the police and public, how will Chris and Andy cope with their first shift? The two British officers split up and patrol in separate unmarked cars. Chris takes his place with Bill and Savage. Andy travels with Jason and Vito. They're the first to get a call. A man dressed in gang colors has threatened a woman at gunpoint. Supposedly a, a male walking down the road. He's supposedly got a handgun on him. There's uh, two gangs in this area, the Latin Kings and the uh, Satan Disciples. Yeah, They're male. saying it's a Latin King. He is. They spot him at the side of the road. The banger's got a violent reputation. Here we go. Put your hands up. Let's go. Come on, man. Let's go, Philo. I just came on the piece of paper. You say what, man? You got something or what? You know what? You better shut the hell up. All you do is shoot up the damn area. Yeah? yeah. Go back. Ma'am, go back. Or you get arrested too. That's my mom, man. Ma'am, step back. Put your hands back. Man, look at them. They're winning. They're winning. Man, step back or you're going to get arrested. All right, man? Man. You know what? I just don't like your attitude. Why are you doing it, man? What are you doing? 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 And he gets stuck in as the man's mother and brother fight to free him from the cops. I ain't drunk. I want to go home. You are hitting me. You are hitting me, man. Everyone is cuffed. It looks like some drugs have been discarded on the pavement. No, not mine. Not mine. Not mine. You catching on me? No. As soon as we pulled up. They've uh, detained them, three of them. They've all started chopping off and getting Larry, and even the mum was uh, getting upset about the fact that her two boys were being searched. Obviously, both males were being searched to see if we could locate the weapon. No weapons have been found at this time, but we have seized some, as they will put it, narcotics. Uh, basically, what they found is uh, an eight ball of uh, cocaine. Chris has joined the hunt for the gun and helps Bill search the scene. They said he might have dropped a gun back here somewhere. I'm just going to take a look around real quick. If we got nothing, we're going to get out of here. And you'll do what? You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. You ain't so You ain't Female. Jason spots the suspect's girlfriend in a nearby restaurant and brings her out for questioning. Put your hands on the car. Do any weapons on you? Do you have any warrants or anything? No. I can't even eat. Let me ask you something. Why do you got an attitude when no one's got an attitude with you? Huh? I'm sorry, sir. I mean, okay. I don't know. I'm well, don't have a attitude with me. I'm talking I'm to you like a okay. gentleman, I'm sorry. okay? You want to see the nice side of me? That's fine. You want to see the jag off side? You'll get that too. I'm sitting in there and they come in and take me. Everybody's got a attitude out here. The victim then comes forward to identify her attacker. 
Kong, he's a drug dealer, big time. The mafia's looking for him now. Chicago's still looking for him? Yeah, mafia, Mexican mafia. He, he stole a lot of cocaine from him. Yeah, he's one that does all the shooting. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even do shit to you. Yeah. I do shit to you, bitch. You're the shooter. You're not shooter. Bitch, shooter, shooter. <laughs> yep. She just ID'd you as pulling a gun out on her. Yeah, right. So now you're going to jail. Have a nice day. How you liking now, baby? Now they got you. Who are you gonna hey, kill now? You smoke crack all day, right? Yeah, I don't smoke something. Hey, do me a favor, get her back. Where's the gun? Gun, here. Man, the f up, man. You're also being brought in for a narcotic investigation, okay? Why? There's a narcotic investigation in progress. The attitude, I think, is what's going on. Spread your legs. What hit me too hit me like they did, man? I get it. Where's the f***ing, man? I'll you think I'm gonna walk down a Cermak with a gun, man? That girl smokes crack. I wanna go home, man. Face the car. Oh, face the car, man. Hit me, bitch. Hit me, hit me. Come on. Hit me, hit me. I like when you hit me, man, because it makes you look good. It makes you look good, boy. Everyone involved, it's taken away for further questioning. A banger's girlfriend and family are soon released. Unable to find the gun and with no proof he had ditched the drugs, the police were forced to release the suspect without charge. As the British Bobbies return to their hotel, Andy feels it's been a satisfactory day. We rolled on a call, as they put it. Uh, a male had pointed a handgun in the street at a member of the public. Um, we found the gentleman, we were first unit on scene, he was walking down the street with uh, another male and his mum. He's not unknown to have taken shots at police officers before uh, in Chicago. So um, he was arrested, he started to kick up, the officer was on his own, there was nobody else apart from me. So uh, yeah, hands on, into an entangled arm lock, into cuffs and into one of the back into one of the cars. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. In part two, the assignment becomes a lot tougher for Andy and Chris. They get in the faces of the gangs, uncover hidden weapons, and encounter firsthand the victims of the violence. Two British Bobbies have been invited to Chicago to see how the police deal with gang violence. In the front line against the street crime, a Cicero's tactical gang unit and Andy and Chris from the Thames Valley Police are about to discover just how tough the problem is. Gang violence around Chicago claimed the lives of more than 400 people last year. Hundreds more were wounded in drive-by shootings. The violence is mirrored in Cicero's commander Jerry Chilada, the boss of the gang unit, explains to Chris. Last year we had 15 homicides within our town of Cicero and uh, they only solved one. So uh, the detectives used to handle it so we pretty much inherited that and in, uh, in the first six weeks we solved three of those 15 homicides. Clearing up these cold case homicides is just part of Cicero's new zero tolerance policy towards gangs as Andy is about to discover out on patrol with Ace and Eric. Uh, these are members of uh, Latin Count Street Gang. They're hanging out on the porch of this house that we're behind right now. We're going to sneak up on them. So street gangs are a big problem in many different communities in our area. Uh, they intimidate the average citizen with uh, the criminal activity that they're involved in. And uh, they fund their gangs with the drug transactions and sales. Uh, that's the, the money that they use to purchase weapons and to operate their, their gangs in, within our town. We do have certain laws that are not necessarily state laws, but they are town laws. Yeah. Uh, curfew, for instance, is one. Uh, you know, um, hanging out, known gang members hanging out in groups of three or more is against town of Cicero ordinances. And basically, you have an option as a police officer when you enforce a town code you could either you could bring the subject in and lock them in the lockup and yeah. make them post a bond or what you can do is write them what we call administrative ticket step down here when everybody steps down to the sidewalk step down here put your back to me keep your hands in the air what are you doing what are you 
special? Fellas, you guys are all coming with us tonight, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Harsh as it seems, this group of young bangers are clearly breaking local gang laws. Because when you sit on the porch, eight deep, this shit ain't happening, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Okay? We've told you guys numerous times, don't f be out here. Ask him what, how he cares about gangs. It's, it's a Latin count sitting on your porch. That's when you lose your right, okay? All right? And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you don't understand it, we'll explain it to you more clearly when we get into the station, okay? Be a man about it. Huh? All right, I'm being a man about it. I'm not saying nothing about it, dude. The cops know groups like this are often armed, and Eric searches for hidden weapons. He finds a baseball bat. They got the colors on, and that's how a shooting starts, and we stop it before it happens. Even when I came up, a car drove by, and they're all like this, looking yeah. to see who's in it, getting ready, you know? So that's why they got to go. For Andy, zero tolerance on gangs is the right tactic. I think the most impressive thing, I'm not sure in regards to policing, but certainly the way they've just got in the faces of all these gangs and they've been allowed to have a zero tolerance to disrupt and, and upset these gangs' activities, which is, is what they try and get us to do back home, but don't allow us to have a zero tolerance policy because we've obviously got different rules and regulations back home. On the way to questioning the arrested youths, Ace explains the punishment facing them. They'll be held in our lockup till probably about uh, two, three in the morning. They'll have to pay seventy-five dollars a bond to get out. But just around the corner, they run into a lone banger on his bike. <laughs> Let's grab this and do it too. Grab it. Hey, come here! Come here! You should get bag your pants. The vivid red colors of the Latin counts are an obvious sign of trouble for Ace and Eric. Right there, I, got, I got a shot in my hip. Why'd you get shot? Because it is, right? And look at you. How old are you, man? You're a grown-ass man, and you're out here acting like a fool, man. The banger's clearly concerned about something. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to do nothing wrong. You ain't trying to do anything wrong? He tries to distract Eric from searching his bike. My leg. He's got good cause to be worried as Eric searches under the saddle. Oh darn. Oh, darn. Sling it. Oh, darn. Oh, you're going to jail. It's a stash of weed hidden in a crisp packet. Too bad that's a foul on you. That's by the park. So guess what? You're going to county. Sir, why do I have to go to county, sir? I'm sorry. Because you got that by the park. I didn't, I didn't, I'm not from around here. I didn't even know people were right over there. I don't want to go to the county, sir, to tell you the truth. 17 bags. He's out here, obviously, driving around, selling cannabis off his bicycle. Technically, we could seize his bicycle, but we're going to be nice today. I have done it before. I'm not, I'm not above doing it. I have done it before. And as you can see, he's wearing his uh, street gang colors. He's also a Latin count. And, uh, now he's going to jail. He joins his fellow Latin counts in the back of the van. So that's nine gang members taken off the street for the night. For Andy, the way the gang unit targets the criminals feels strangely familiar. They disrupt their behavior, their... Uh as it sounds really do, disruptive patrolling, getting in their faces as much as possible, stopping them from working. Chris explains his own forces firearms policy to Sergeant Tony Mazza. The main difference is the guns. We're just, none, none of our officers have guns. We're not even trained. We're 2% of the force that are, are armed, um, and they have to have authority to, to carry that arm on them. They can have it within the vehicle locked away, um, but they only get called out to sort of armed incidents, and we don't get armed incidents. I mean, most of our, our robbers and, your, you know, your druggies and that carry knives. Very rarely do we, do we encounter anyone with, with firearms. Good. It is good, yeah. But the trouble is, they are out there. Oh, and when yeah. we do come across them, you know, because you, yeah. you, you can't, you know, yeah. you can't do anything back. Across town, Eric and Ace are now on their way to recover a shotgun. 
They've had a tip-off from their last prisoner, who grasped up his gang to try and avoid jail. The last guy that we arrested with the uh, marijuana, was, he opened his heart to us and told us that members of his street gang are supposed to be hiding a uh, 410 gauge shotgun in the basement of this uh, apartment complex. We're going to go over there now and check for it, see if we can uh, locate it and recover it. He thinks he's in more trouble than he actually is. You know, we kind of bullshitted him a little bit. But the thing about it is this. Guns don't sit. You know, it's, it's a Friday night, it's active, so there's a chance that it might not be there because, you know, they might have it out somewhere waiting to use it on somebody. Our unit alone recovered uh, six different handguns right. in one week. Yeah. So you come to the town, so there's definitely a lot of handguns out there. Finding the gang's guns is a priority for the unit. Satan disciples, the SDs, are hiding a gun over here in the, the empty lot under some uh, some rubbish and uh, said that they hide the gun there in case a rival gang comes by. This gun's a, a 22 revolver. It holds 10 rounds. It's empty right now. Another gun off the street. The team's search of a basement turns up a package. Disappointingly, it turns out to be drugs, and no shotgun is found. A recovered revolver has been tampered with. Pretty they heavy try, they try to grab it off the serial number. Oh yeah, they try to deface the number off. But they have ways, the lab has ways of raising the number up. A lot of time the gang members take them in uh, burglaries. They rob people's houses and steal their guns from their houses. The only time I've seen a gun like that before was when I had a holster when I was a kid and it was a cat gun. It looked just like that. No. The amount of weapons hidden around the streets is a new experience for Chris, but he's catching on fast. They, they put them in locations where it's, they've got quick access. It could be out in the open air, could be in a bush, could be behind some, you know, an old box, behind generators, anything. They, they hide them anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Uh, and then if some another gang comes past shooting or they want to get the gun, they run to this location, retrieve it, and then it goes straight back there, you know, as soon as the uh, old bill turn up on block, because they don't want to get nicked, they don't want to get caught with a gun, because there's a, obviously very stiff penalties uh, for walking around with a loaded weapon. Chris is soon on the hunt for another weapon with Bill and Joe. Uh, right now we're going to uh, check a location that my informant gave me for um, to look for a gun. As part of the zero tolerance crackdown, every firearm they can take out of circulation makes Cicero a safer place. From bitter experience, the cops know that even one gun can result in dozens of shootings. Informant uh, called us up, told us it was a stash spot for a gang. Yeah, most of the guns are really beat up. You know, they're usually revolvers. They prefer them. They don't misfire. Uh, they don't leave casings. You know, they don't like to leave evidence laying around. One less gun on the street, so. In America, every cop is armed. And something I found which is really strange is that they have to buy their own firearms here. They're meant to be armed but they have to buy their own weapons. They get supplied with the, uh, the rounds, so they get supplied with bullets and cartridges and what have you. Um, but they don't get supplied with weapons, so they, they choose what weapon they want. But yesterday we went out with Eric and Edgar, and uh, we had a bit, of a bit more of a taste of their gun culture out here. Eric bought in his, uh, his large assault rifle, which he paid $3,000 for, plus $800 for the uh, laser light. You want to keep this dot in between these two sites, Joel, to make them three in a row. And your sight picture should be on the other side of this. Yeah. Rip your tissue in half. <laughs> nothing like a bit of sophisticated uh, ear muffling equipment. And this is nothing like a bit of sophisticated ear muffling equipment. Okay. In fact, Chris has never fired a gun before in his life.
should have brought more round. We're done. <laughs> we'll use them all up. Went off and fired off some guns on an old disused driving movie. It was like being in a movie ourselves, it was that was it. But with three rounds at an old bucket, which is like an approved practice centre, which is quite bizarre really. You don't get away with that health safety you know. And he explains to Gene about his work back in the Thames Valley. So you guys travel around, you go in different police districts. Yeah. But what is your like job? We work in a town called Reading, which is about 25, 30 miles outside London. At the minute, we're targeting, um, as we call them, yardies. But we just go out and arrest them and harass them, get in their faces. We had a shooting the other day, which obviously, for us, is a big thing. It's a major incident. And makes the papers and news headlines and is on the media everywhere. How do they get the guns? I mean, buy them anywhere. Black they're, market. Yeah, they're accessible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, if, people, yeah. if they wanted one, they could get yeah. one. Yeah. And it's, Did they ever think about supplying all you guys with guns? The powers that be like to retain this good old British Bobby with the yeah, yeah. tit on his head and, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they don't want to scare the public too much. If we all become armed, they think that's the final straw. Because if we're armed, the bad guys are armed, uh, so it escalates. A couple years ago, we had as much as uh, almost 80 shootings in one year. Hmm. Yeah, so, and it's, you know, to work uh, shooting after shooting after shooting is really very tiresome. Yeah. Last year we had 15 people killed from shootings. Yeah. Uh, and we had upper into the 70s as far as uh, number of people that were actually hit. True. And 15 of them died. And, uh, you know, it's just very tiring. Yeah, I bet. Very tiring. For a police area of just four square miles, they're alarming statistics. They're in stark contrast to the UK and show the different scale of crime the American cops have to deal with on a daily basis. Cicero, Murder Town, Shite Town and shit. Cicero, Cicero 2-6, Murder Town, King Killer, Disciple, Killer, Rifle, G, Bow Down, Get Gun Down. Later that night, there's a call to a shooting. Chris is working with Kirby. Way to, uh, to be called in this drive-by shooting, and possibly two victims down at this time. All right, we got people shot in the legs, whatever. Andy is dashing to the scene with Donnie and Marcus. Everything's happening today, man. Move the f out of the way, you. F two, four, five, four, right, Marcus? SDs. That's an SD location. Alright, kill him. There's still a chance the gunman might be in the area. And in a shooting like this, with at least two victims, every member of the tactical unit has to respond. On the porch, the first victim. The man with the white trousers has been shot in the back. Say shit, man. Say no, just All I heard was pop, 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 pop. Where are you shot? In the back, you got another Mike. one in here. Mike. All right, yeah. who else is shot? One there. The guy in there has got in the legs. There's another casualty inside the house. He's in a lot of pain and has been hit twice. Which leg? Jose Corral? Yeah. Where do you live? You live on 18th and 59th or something? I don't stand. I'm 63rd and Austin. 63rd and Austin? Get over here fast. I will say Corral. He's shot in front of us. He was shot in front of us. Where's the flashlight, please? Hurry up and go. Gents? Here, here, here. Shine it this way, please. As the paramedics work on the injuries, Jean tries to get any information that can lead to the gunman. You guys didn't say nothing to you? No. Did you see a car pass earlier? No. What? See your address. <laughs> He also has to stop him losing consciousness. Number, number. A shocked flatmate tells Ace he only heard the gunfire. Let me ask you this, okay? Did you see? Did you see who walked up? Uh, I just heard pow, 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 pow. I was in the room with the kid, man. Was it a fat mucker or was it a skinny little rat? I ain't seen nobody. And I would tell you, you know, I told you last time I would tell you, bro. One of the guys that live at this address or hangs at this address uh, was involved with uh, the gang. Uh, he wanted out of the gang. He's been hanging with these guys, uh, trying to stay away from the guys. They put an SOS on him, which is a uh, shoot on site. Uh, so we're thinking it's the SDs that came over and to shoot him. He feels like walking. He's walking. 
Amazingly, the man shot in the back walks to the ambulance. Kirby thinks his injuries could be worse than they look. The guy in the back, well, that can go in either way. Depends on where the bullet went when it went in. At this point, the guy shot twice, one in the leg and one in the calf. I, I assume he's probably in good condition. Go from that tree, Mike, if you can, all the way around to this tree. A cordon is thrown up and the unit conduct a search of the shooting scene. We have the shell casings to identify the possible uh, gun that was used in this shooting. Each shell case they find is marked for forensics. I'll say nine, but it's just a guess. Nine millimeter. With so many shootings in Cicero, the paramedics are expert at dealing with bullet wounds. They start the treatment immediately before the victims even get to hospital. Both men made a full recovery and have now moved out of the house, but the gunmen have never been traced. The first actual shooting we've attended where someone has been shot and hit, two people have been hit in the leg, one guy was in the kitchen. They tried to come out the gang. They took exception to it and decided to go around and blast him away. Um, five, five rounds shot him from close range. I think they were just showing, giving him a lesson because it would have been hard to miss the bloke in the head or the chest to sort of finish him off. It was both the fellows had been shot in the leg, so I imagine they, they put no, no bullets in on him. Um, but he had a, a nasty uh, bullet wound in his calf on his leg and was losing a lot of blood. Um, uh, and then that was about it. In part three, the unit tries to defuse the tension on the street after the shootings. And Chris and Andy find even more differences between themselves and the Cicero cops. The two British Bobbies have now been in Chicago for two weeks, learning how the cops cope with the rampant street violence. On their way to another shift, Andy and Chris are at last coming to terms with the confusing gang culture. Or are they? I don't know, I don't know where the gangs come from. Do you, I, don't really understand. I understand that they've got this divide that some of them are serious people, some are serious folks, and some gangs um, work alongside each other. We've got the two twos, the two sixes, Randy Dunn, the Vikings, Latin dis or the Manic La Latin Disciples. Manic Street Preachers. Yes. <laughs> um, what else have we got? You've got the Satan Disciples. Yeah. You've got, have I, talk, have I said the Latin Kings? Have I said that? Yes. What about the Cuddly Toys? Did two, I mention two, that? Two twos. No, that's a gun. Two sixes. Did I? Two sixes. That's not a gun. It may sound childish, but on the streets it's deadly serious. We got information from Chicago 10th District. The two six and the Maniac Latin Disciples are uh, heating up again. Last year we had a big war going on. Uh, a lot of people got uh, shot. A lot of people got killed. Uh, it's starting up again. Chicago had three shootings. One of them was a homicide. They're thinking the Maniacs from our town are involved. If a kid comes from another different suburbs or a different city, a rival gangbanger or a rival gang member, you just might just come up to him and you shoot him for no reason, just because he might be wearing a, a, a wrong colors or might have a, a certain hat uh, or, or might have a certain design on his jacket, you know. Maniac Latin Disciples are baby blue and black. Two six, two weeks are also blue and black. Also, we're getting a lot of complaints, 19th and 48 court. Uh, Ashen Vikings and GD are starting up. The GDs, Gangster Disciples, they're usually blue and black also. Then you also have the Ashland Vikings. Um, their colors are uh, green and black. The well, GDs graffiti the neighborhood. Two days ago, we caught uh, three Ashland Vikings uh, in the act. They fled the area in a van, led on a little, small little car chase. Uh, they tried to bail out. We got them. And uh, like I said, we got the paint, we got the guy. He said uh, the GDs are coming over messing with them. Then they graffitied on the wall and they wanted to go mark over their stuff. So we got to keep an eye on that 19th to 48 court. Worryingly, more graffiti has appeared as Savage explains to Chris. They're talking about one of the, the, the guys that got killed. The maniac shot the Tutu boys. And what they're doing is it could be two things. They're just remembering them by writing his name up here, or they're going to retaliate against the opposite gang and possibly do a burn against one of the opposite rival gangs. So it could be a shooting today, tomorrow, but they're obviously up to something by graffitiing today. 
in remembrance of this, uh, the wicked guy. Right. A lot of times, yeah. us as police, we drive through the neighborhoods and we just read the walls. A lot of times, yeah. the walls is like a newspaper. I mean, yeah. they, if they went and um, shot somebody the night before, they would actually put on the on the wall or on the garage. They would spray paint their gang, and they would put down the subject that they shot. Say they shot a subject named Flacco. Yeah. They would say, you know, burn in hell, Flacco. Yeah. They yeah. would actually write it on the garage, right. taking, you know, claim that they did okay. the shooting. With so much tension on the streets, Marcus and Donnie have taken Andy to hunt out any gang spraying graffiti. Right now, you're in the most trouble because I seen you step on a car all hard and shit, you know? You gonna tell me the truth? Come on, hey. You gonna tell me the truth? You gonna go home today? Alright, alright. Make for it. Don't make up some bullshit now. Man, honestly, I You take their one. I take their one. It doesn't even stop for anything. Shut up. We don't what? gang bang. What are you gonna take off? Be honest. Harrison Jones? Eventually, they admit to tagging the garage in a gang dispute. This is what they were spray painting. Ace. What sign is that? Who it's is Her it? Harrison Gents. Is it? Yeah, Her it's Harrison Gent Nation. These guys are they're championships. This is terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> this guy spray paint all over his hands. He says he did it because the guys down the street, they became involved in the altercation. So instead of leaving like a normal person would, like you or I would, yeah. he decides he's going to come over here and tag a gang that he doesn't belong to. That's what he's saying. He expects us to leave. Yeah, right. Because, man, I'm not a gang banger. Why I mean, would you tag? You think he's going to scare them? What if they got a strap? You think I'm just going to scare them? They're f***ing with us, sir. So why would you tag up? I'm sorry. No. So why would you tag? Why don't you call social police? Everything coming out of your mouth is bullshit to me right it's now, not, man. Sir. Whose car is this? It's your car? All right. Because I like honesty, right. and I haven't heard one honest shit. This car is going to be consistent with police and it'll cost you a G. That's what it's going to cost you. Shut up, man. Shut the f Forget it. I'm done. I asked you guys eight zillion questions. You guys haven't told me the truth yet. It's a bit of a, you know, a bravery thing, if you like. They're, they're tagging their sign on different gangs' neighborhoods. So that's what we've caught them in the act doing. We've recovered the spray can from the car and also some... Uh, open beer bottles for which they'll obviously get dealt with at the police station. Another potential shooting has been averted as the group's car is impounded and they're taken to the station. As part of the zero tolerance approach to gangs, the graffiti is cleaned up within hours. But with trouble still brewing, the unit are stopping every car that may contain gang members. Came out to Laramie Avenue here, which is a main thoroughfare. The unmarked squad was in front of me. This car here was going about 50 miles an hour, driving right up on them, uh, riding on their bumper. Pulled them over on a traffic stop, and there's uh, open bottles of booze in the car. In America, you can't drive with open alcohol in the car. Go to jail. Back over in England, uh, certainly pulled someone over for us all drinking beer. We haven't got a jurisdiction to uh, arrest them with an open team, but we're breath tested driver anyway. Thing is, these lads are 16, so uh, if you're under the age of 18, we've got the right to confiscate beer. If it's open, we just pour it away. Uh, and if they've got tins that are closed, we can confiscate that if they're underage. If they're overage, uh, as I say, there's not a lot we can do if someone's drinking beer in a car. Stand up. With the range of local laws behind them, there are dozens of ways of getting the bangers off the street. As the two are arrested for having open beer in the car, Marked differences are beginning to appear with the way the British and Americans deal with drivers who have been drinking. It's a contrast that becomes more obvious to Chris later that night. Edgar and Eric have spotted a car that clearly shouldn't be on the road. Hi. What the hell did you do to your car? I don't know. I hit something off on the corner. And... 387 a plate. The driver seems unconcerned. What'd you just hit, Look man? It. I don't know. You hit something. You hit a car. Do you understand the problem I'm having with this right now? Yeah. No? You don't understand? You have uh, no tires on this side of your car. Well, I've been trying to find a tire place to go to. But you understand that's not normal to drive around oh. in your car without two tires? You understand oh, yeah. where I have a problem with this? Why something in my head's like, this is strange? No. Have you been drinking or something? No, sir. I had uh, two beers at dinner, and that would have been four o'clock. Chris finds even more crash damage. Yeah, he's coming back as well. Yeah, he's coming back into something. 
That would have been by my garage. Your garage fit that as well? What today? Yeah, I own the garage. garage today? I own the He's having a bad day. That's incredible what you said is in a pothole. You stick the car right off. I just wanted to make sure you didn't hit a bunch of people's cars and then trying to run away from it. He's, he's smashed up at the face, he's smashed all the front up a bit. I was looking at it, I was just trying to see if there was um, any paint on it from any other cars. I don't know what he's in. He's done a job on it, that's for sure. I only had two drinks the whole time. Well, every, you know what? I've been a cop for 12 years. Everyone I asked if they've been drinking, they all say the same thing, two beers. The man's mangled car is taken to the car pound. But with their minds focused on the street gangs, Edgar and Eric decide not to carry out a long series of sobriety tests. They allow the man to walk away and hail a taxi. This seemingly relaxed attitude to road safety has struck a nerve with the two British bobbies. There is a big difference in police in here, especially with the unit that we're working with. Um, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to concentrate on anything apart from being gang related. If it's gang-related, they'll deal with it. Um, anything else, like, um, I suppose it's a difference in the law, really, but what we class as drink drivers that are blatant drink drivers that can just about stand up, fall out of a car, they're not interested in. They, send to, they tend to let on their way, um, which does concern me, and it <laughs> concerns Chris as well. I've seen people that are clearly high and drunk, totally wasted, and they've stopped them because their driver's erratic, and they just let them go on their way. Obviously, back home, if we let that person go, and they then go and have an accident, kill somebody, damage something, and obviously that person finds out that we've stopped them just prior to the accident, you know, we're deeply in the shit. Hi. How you guys doing? How much you had to drink tonight, David? A couple of beers. What's happening? All right, guys. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? Favela to Hector Favela. Favela? Yeah. Where are you going? Your price? Were you drinking? Uh, a little bit? Only two? Yeah. You wasted. Hey, next time we see you driving that car, you're going to go to jail, buddy. Back on the streets, Chris is on another call with Bill and Joe. Guy running down the street screaming for help. So we're going to slide by and kind of see what's going on. A man's been spotted causing a disturbance outside the rail yards. What, man? Hold still. What is your problem? You've been drinking? There's no problem. No? I want to go home. I want to go home. That's what my... Stay in the car. Great. Thank Don't you. Move. Thanks. Don't move. I'm trying to go home. Thank you. What are you punching stuff for and yelling and screaming? Because I want to go home. Again? You're gonna relax you live in the Grange or you live in uh, Riverside? Hey. What do you want me to live? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> huh? You, you tell me. What is going to cause you more pain? Are you going to relax now? <laughs> All right. All right. Sit okay. up and put your hands on the hood. Put your hands on the hood. Stay still. I live in Riverside. I'm trying to go home. I want to go home because I want to fucking pass out. They him out of the rail yard or something. How'd you get over here? Because I live here. This is Cicero. You're not in fucking Riverside. I live down the street. Put your hand back in the car. You live down what street? Is this street Harlem or is it not? No. Harlem. You're in Austin. Oh. Then I'm far away from home. Yeah, you are. I know. Put your hand back in the car. As much for his own safety as anything else, he's arrested. See, why couldn't you just comply? I'm trying to get home, man. I don't want to walk home. I've been trying to call my friends so I can pick me up, man. We answered a call of a man screaming for help and ended up being, uh, person that was a little bit intoxicated uh, obviously he's kind of lost he's not from the area took him in for disorderly conduct just to get him out the street and make sure he doesn't hurt himself or anybody else by running around the middle of the street so you just want to go back home what's your head i'm just trying to get back home i have a seat. what the hell man <laughs> I, have a seat. Uh, I just want to get home because that's what he was saying right i just want to get home well he's going to find his way home i guess 
I'll find Cicero Police Station first, then I'll find his way over. Annie and Chris are now halfway through their time in Cicero. Next time on Road Wars USA, they see how the gangbangers react to getting shot. The unit sets out to target drug dealers. And Chris runs down a fleeing suspect. What's your problem, eh? What's your problem? Dean Superman Kane shows he's still got what it takes in brand new Las Vegas, next year on Sky One. He's a very handsome man. Whilst over on Sky Movies 2, meanwhile, there's action and thrills with Kira Knightley, swapping Beverly Hills for the life of a bounty hunter in the premiere of Domino.